Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. On this channel, we spend our time looking at fantasy of all sorts, from movies to video games to books, and taking a look at the characters within, applying them into the tabletop game Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Today, though, we're going to be looking at a core mechanic to Dungeons & Dragons itself, specifically the class known as the Paladin. The Paladin is the Holy Warrior, the one that wears the great plate mail, wielding the mighty holy weapons and smiting evildoers in the name of their god and the church or deity that they follow. But how do they stack up mechanically? Do they deserve the great reputation that they have as one of the best damage dealers in the game? Let's have a look. Paladins start the game with a hit dice of a d10. D10 is the best hit dice in the game, save for the Barbarian, meaning that the Paladins are absolutely going to have the health they need to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemies of the game. I give this a 9 out of 10 for the hit die. Paladins are proficient, just like fighters, in all armor and all weapons, giving you all the selection you possibly could need as far as combat goes. 10 out of 10 on both, you can't go wrong here. Pick your style and go for it. Tools, though, nothing to see. There is no proficiency here, so they get no boost to the class. Just a standard 5 out of 10 there. Their saving throws are pretty impressive, though. Wisdom, which is, in my opinion, one of the best ones in the game, and Charisma, which is a decent one as well. I give them a 10 out of 10 and an 8 out of 10, respectively. Now, for their skills, they only get to pick two skills out of a list of six. They're not the skill junkie of the party. So, an 8 out of 10 and a 7 out of 10 for the amount and the variety. But then we get into their real holy powers. First up is the Divine Sense. They can use an action a few times per day and detect good or evil creatures within a 60-foot radius of them. This is circumstantial and has a limited use, for sure, but it can be handy in very niche situations. Uh, I give it a 6 out of 10. There are other spells that can do this, but the Paladin just kind of gets it, you know, a few times for free, so not terrible. But their Lay on Hands power, that's where it really comes to it. Five times their Paladin level, they keep a pool of healing points, and they can use their ability to lay their hands on someone and heal them without using a spell slot. They just have this pool of healing dice. Paladins actually make pretty decent healers. Obviously, they have to touch you, so it's not as good as something like Healing Word, but free healing is good in pretty much every circumstance, and it doesn't take anything away from the Paladin at all. Very handy to have. 9 out of 10. Now, Paladins also get a few fighting styles. These ones are largely geared towards defensive uh, tactics. They have the protection and the armor class boosting one. They also have ones that lean into one-handed and two-handed weapons. So they don't go for anything ranged or anything magical. It's pretty simple. Just pick a two-handed weapon or a one-handed weapon with a shield, and you'll be good to go. Fighting styles boost them up a decent amount. I give this an 8 out of 10 for the extra little buff. Now, paladins are spellcasters. Some people tend to forget that because they're so powerful in melee combat, but they are actually half-casters, charisma casters specifically, and uh, their powers are largely geared towards damage dealing and divine smiting, as you were, which we'll get to in a sec. Um, but having magic is never bad. It's always nice to have a separate option than just hitting someone with a sword or hammer. So, 9 out of 10 for spellcasting. But the Divine Smite power is where it really comes clutch. Instead of using your spell slots to cast a spell, you can use your spell slots to improve the damage on your melee attacks, smiting your enemies with extra radiant damage, which scales with you as your paladin levels up. Using spell slots to do extra damage with melee attacks just combines the magic with the might. This is a 10 out of 10, and something that the paladins pretty much use all the time. Next up, they get Divine Health. This makes them immune to disease. Disease is not something that comes up often in D&D. Uh, 
But when it does, it dehabilitates you and your rests don't heal you. And unless you have a very, very high level healer, you're not going to be able to get rid of disease in early points of the game. Paladins, though, just don't care. They're immune to it. Uh, I give this ability 7 out of 10. Circumstantial, but when it comes up, it can be life-saving. They get 5 ability score improvements from their 1 to 20 campaign. Nothing special to see here. 8 out of 10 for that. They also get extra attack. As a frontline fighter, this makes sense. And they get the standard double attack, and that's about it. It doesn't need to get anything more complicated, because that's good. 9 out of 10. Next up is their Aura of Protection. Now, the Aura of Protection is a great thing for both yourself and your allies, because anyone who is close to you, this includes you, gets to add your Charisma modifier to their saving throws of any kind. This is really, really handy for protecting against AoE effects or any other big thing that has to do with saving throws, as long as they're close enough to you for it to matter. Um, this is absolutely fantastic. Adding anything to a saving throw is great. They don't get buffed easily. So I give this a 10 out of 10. It doesn't get better, and at higher levels, it does extend to a further aura, so better, even better. Next up, the Aura of Courage. Uh, similar to the Aura of Protection, it makes your party, who's close enough to you, immune to fear. This includes you. Immunity to fear is good. Immunity to fear for your party is great. Fear is not the most common thing, but there are lots of creatures out there that can push you away using fear and make it really hard to fight them. So... 8 out of 10 for that one. Next up, you get Improved Divine Strike. This means that you don't have to burn a spell slot for your Divine Strike to hit. At high level Paladins, they can use their magic and they can use their Divine Strike without burning their magic. This is fantastic as you get those higher level Paladin spells and this is a 10 out of 10 power. There is no weakness here. Finally, the Cleansing Touch power. This gives you the ability a few times to dispel magic, to end magical effects on your allies or on yourself. So if you've got someone who's been hit by a nasty spellcaster, you can use this power to just cleanse them of that magic. This is a 9 out of 10 power. Never a bad thing to have. It's a little limited and it comes on a little late, but it's very valuable. And that's it. The Paladin actually doesn't get its Capstone feature from its class. It gets it from its subclass. So, all of this added up when you crunch the numbers, the Paladin gets a solid 9 out of 10. It is well-deserving of its reputation. It is one of the strongest, most well-armored, magical, smiting classes out there. And having one in your party for both damage dealing, healing, tankiness, protection... Paladins really do it all. And they're one of the most useful classes to have around for any situation. So, highly recommend 9 out of 10 for the Paladin overall. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below. Keep your eyes up for more class reviews coming down the line very soon. Have a good one, my friends.